Hi. I want to talk a little bit about players today. And they're weird. And you can do stuff to make them le less weird. But like in a good way. Okay, so what I mean basically is a lot of DMs have this problem where they start doing stuff with a character that they don't really get or they don't really like. That's bad. <laughs> this is important, right? You want to make sure that you like your player's characters. This is super important, especially if you're running a long-term thing. So this might sound really stupid, like obviously you want to like your player's characters. But a lot of people don't do this because what they do is they think a lot about... Well, my players are making their characters and I don't want to interfere. I want to let my players make the characters they want to make. You don't need to do that. Okay, you do, but you don't. Here's what I mean. When your players are making characters, you need to be careful about making sure that they're not going crazy off the rails and not doing things that you wouldn't like. But, of course, you want to make it feel like you know, they have ownership over their characters, of, of course. And you don't do this by changing their characters. This is the problem, right? This is the big problem. If you try to make a change to a character that a player makes, it feels really bad to the player often, not always, but often, because now it feels a little bit less like their character. You know what I mean? You, you know what I mean? This has happened to probably every DM probably multiple times. Okay. There's a really simple solution to this, and I'm going to talk about what the solution is, and I'm going to talk about why this is such an important thing to pull off correctly. Because really what we're talking about is frankly a little bit of sleight of hand. We do want the player to feel like there's full ownership, but you need to have some ownership as a DM over that player character. Otherwise, you might not like it. And if you don't like the player character, everyone's going to be miserable. Now, you can explain this to players, and everyone, for the most part, will be understanding and agree, yes, the DM should like my character. But when you actually execute on that and go, okay, but I'm going to take that character and change it, you remove some of that sense of ownership over the character, and then that just slowly starts to erode that... Well, it erodes the ownership a little bit, and, and the the... The actual manifestation of that can be can be myriad. They might, for example, start to slowly check out. A change to the backstory might be a little bit uh, less tolerated than people would be. Like, this is one of the things. It's not the only thing, but it's one of the things that really makes a difference between whether you making a change to a backstory or adding uh, some surprise element to a backstory exciting versus kind of intrusive and annoying is if you're sort of over that threshold where the player is starting to lose sense of ownership over the character and a lot of this starts in character creation so okay so the solution is very simple have players make multiple characters very simple this is this is why it's not because you're going to select a character and say go with this one it's because you're going to look at the character and you're going to say, I like this element and this element and this element. And you're going to be genuine. You're going to look at these and you're going to be really genuine about it, right? You're going to look at them and you're going to find the things about each character that you like. And then you're going to say, hey, can you make a couple more characters that maybe combine all these elements? If you do that, then when the player comes back with the next couple of characters, you'll be in good shape. You're almost certainly going to like the character. And if you don't, you just keep going through that process right very simple this is this is how feedback works i'm a lead game designer at my job and i have to and, and i also do a lot of educational stuff a lot of teaching and i have to teach people how to design and often i have to take work that is frankly not very high quality and help people learn how to bring it up to a higher degree of quality and how to align with my vision of the game design that's part of my responsibility right so taking what they do and making sure that they always bring multiple options, right? Hey, can you come up with five solutions to this problem? Then they bring me the solution to that problem. And I go, I like this because it does this. I like this because it does this. And I like this because it does this. Can you come up with a new solution that incorporates those three elements into like one or two new suggestions, um, preferably two or three suggestions, new suggestions. You always want multiple 
because that maximizes the chance that there's going to be something that you like, right? So this is very simple. Just do it with characters. Never, ever, ever, ever say, here's a list of things you need, need to know, make characters. And then players all make one character and they come and they go, this is my character. Players are very precious about their character. But what you need to understand is that a player will be very precious about their character no matter what, right? Like they're going to be very precious about their characters and then you're all their characters will die hypothetically and then they'll make new characters and they'll all be very precious about the, they'll be very precious about their characters because they're their characters not because they're that specific character right at any given point in time a player will have an a potentially infinite number of pl of player characters that that player would be interested in playing and highly invested in and the really big important element the through line there the 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 constant among all of them is that strong sense of ownership. So it's not enough to just say, don't remove ownership of the characters from the players, because actually you kind of have to in some cases, because you need to like the character. Well, that makes things complicated, but if you're always doing this like multiple method thing and then only focusing on the positives, but then going on to the next iteration and just accepting that there's gonna be multiple iterations, what you can do is you can really focus on those positives and then make sure that throughout those iterations, the player making the character never feels as if it's anything other than that player's character. It never feels like it's partly your character ever, ever, right? Because, because at all points in time, the player went away and went, okay, well, I can do that. I can solve this problem. Just like with uh, the juniors that I've worked with in the past and that I work with now, there's a lot of, you come up with a solution. I'll lay out the problem, but I'll lay out the problem in such a way that your solution conforms to certain boundaries. That's my job is to make sure that those boundaries are maintained and respected. So part of my job. But then, but then that junior never feels like it's not their work. Does, does that make sense? I think that makes sense. So that you just need to do the same thing with your players. So I highly recommend doing this, I, this, this thing where you do multiple, right? Do multiple players, uh, multiple character concepts. And then as you do that, you'll find a, what questions that you want players to answer in character creation that you think will most likely lead to things that you like. And you'll start asking those questions. And if you just ask your players before they start making the characters, the questions that you need answers uh, answers to, then then they'll those answers will shape the uh, character creation process, and it's it feels a little bit manipulative. But the reason it's not, and you can make it manipulative, don't obviously, but you you avoid making it manipulative by just being really genuine at all times, making sure that you understand that by doing this process, the player creates something that you like. Right? It might take a little bit of extra iteration, but you're always working toward this idea that the player will iterate towards something that you like, but the player is iterating towards it, right? The player making the character, it's always, it's always that player's work. It's always that player's character. It's never you going, hey, you should do this, hey, you should do this. And then if you do something later, like I'm gonna uh, add this NPC to your backstory that's relevant for whatever reason, you add, do some stuff, right? You, you tweak their backstory just enough that you can get something really cool out of it. You can. Uh, you can start doing that and you actually have a lot more leeway for that and the players will tolerate it a lot more tolerate isn't quite the right word there um, but you can do it a lot more before their ownership feels like it's starting to erode and that's what you have to do because that way you have a lot more latitude in messing with them in, in a lot of interesting ways so this isn't really a game design thing it is a little bit but it's more about um using uh processes and methodology that i've learned for giving better feedback and guiding the process of design uh, in the context of character creation so that you can sort of maintain your vision for the game, which you need to do, and that includes character creation. You can't just compromise on your vision relentlessly because it's player characters. You can't do that, right? That, that tends to cause a lot of complications. So this is a method that you can use that doesn't require that you compromise on your vision, but also the players don't have to either. Uh, not much game design stuff today, but hopefully that's helpful for some of you. And I'm working on a bit of a more long-term project right now. I'm setting up 
I'm setting up a series on uh, gameplay progression systems and how they relate to running a D and D game, but it's kind of complicated. Progression is that progression design is actually very complicated and requires a lot of psychology and stuff. So I'm slowly working on that. Uh, I'm going to try to get some other stuff out in the meantime. That's all I've got for today. Going to try to keep this uh, pretty brief. So thanks for watching. Bye bye.